This is an analog to digital converter. It takes an analog signal as input and outputs a digitally quantized representation of it. The converter value is constrained within the number of bits the ADC can represent. But what if we would want to get more bits of those physically available? Is that possible? I'm Claudio Hütte and this is Accidental Science. Let's discover how we can squeeze more bits from an ADC and why it works and you will want to exploit this potential. Analog to digital converters make a quantization of the sampled input. Also, the input signal is sampled into a discrete time domain, unlike flash ADCs that work on continuous time domain. As we see later on this presentation, this fact is essential. Quantized means that the continuous input signal is mapped into a smaller, countable set of numbers. And because we have limits to both the analog range the input can handle and the maximum set of numbers that can be counted for, this combined result in a representation of the input value that is a multiple of a base unit, given by the ratio between the input analog range and the maximum count. And this is a fancy way to define the maximum resolution at which we can represent the original signal. In other words, for example, if we count to maximum 256 and the input ranges from 0 to 5 volt, the resulting base unit is 5 minus 0 volt over 256, which gives 19.5 millivolt which means that uh, of the all infinite possible values, only multiples of 19.5 millivolt can be counted. And this represents the maximum resolution of the analog to digital converter of this example. Now, let's suppose we have an 8-bit ADC, which as we have seen, has a maximum resolution of 19.5 millivolt. But we want to get from it 9 bits to achieve twice the resolution. 9.77 millivolt. How we can do this? All right, to understand how we can achieve this, we must first need to see how sampling is done. At the beginning, I said that uh, unlike flash ADCs, all other types of ADC samples the analog signal into a discrete time domain. And for the sake of this presentation, I define this kind of ADCs as discrete time domain ADC. This is an important distinction to achieve our goal or virtually increase the resolution beyond the physical available bits. So let's see how this actually works and its interesting side effects. For the purpose of this presentation, we consider a typical successive approximation ADC. Here the input signal is sampled and held while a comparator detects when a generator count that is converted back to analog through a DAC match with the sampled and held input signal. When this happens the counter is stopped and the counted value is returned as converted value. And uh, at that point the whole process is started over again, making a cycle. A cycle means frequency, and indeed this is the frequency sampling rate. Also, as you can see, the signal is quantized, choosing an integer number that falls into a multiple of the base unit, represented here by each step of this staircase curve. Well, to let you understand better what's going on here, I wrote this simple web app simulator that I've made available also in my website at accidentalscience.com so you can play with it. Link in the description. In this graph, the x-axis represents time, the black sine wave represents the analog signal at input, and the red vertical lines represent when sampling happens over time, in other words, the sampling rate. The blue dots show where the input waveform is quantized and here we can change the resolution from a sixteenth to 1 over 10 24th. Finally, the green line is a linear interpolation between the points and uh, represents the reconstructed input waveform after the process of discretization and quantization, or for short, digitalization. Now, if I reduce the maximum count, it is possible to somewhat see the effect of quantization, even though it must be greatly exaggerated to make it visible. 
and uh, as you can see using a ramp in place of a sine wave as input signal makes it even more visible now by changing the input frequency in relation to the sampling frequency we can visually understand the nyquist frequency which states that the maximum representable frequency of the input signal must be at most half of the sampling frequency and in fact, as you can see, when we reach half of the sampling frequency, which is the Nyquist frequency, we just get one sample high and one sample low. So above this frequency, we lose the ability to represent uh, the input frequency. And when the input signal reaches the same sampling frequency, the digitized signal becomes flat. So above this frequency, and indeed above half of it, uh, we start to notice aliases that are mistaken representation of the original input signal. And that happens because the sampler misses some cycles of the input frequency. It is an alias because it is a reconstructed signal that have a relationship with both the input frequency and the sampling frequency. And uh, since the purpose of this simulation is to provide an intuitive approach to understand uh, the physics that govern a discrete time domain ADC through visualization, I added the possibility to show more samples so it becomes easier to grasp intuitively the resulting effect. Keep in mind though that your brain tricks you and you may see waveforms that indeed don't exist. However, you may also see better the Alice waveform generated from the interference between the sampling frequency and the input frequency. And let's see another interesting aspect of the ability to represent the original signal. Now I set for 16 samples and you'll notice that at the Nyquist frequency, remember half of the sampling frequency, while it is still possible to represent the original frequency, it can be represented only a sine wave of such a frequency. This is more evident when I switch between a sine wave to a south-south waveform. Obviously, this is because any waveform that is not a sine wave is made up of higher harmonic components at higher frequencies that, of course, they, are, they will be above the Nyquist frequency and therefore will be impossible to represent uh, where the aliases will take their place distorting the reconstructed waveform. And this is another way to see the frequency limit. Well, We've seen a lot about discrete time domain ADCs and I think we are ready to understand how it is possible to squeeze more bits from such an ADC. The procedure is called oversampling and decimation and related to the fact that increasing the sampling rate or conversely reducing the input frequency allows to use additional samples to get more information from the input achieved by introducing a small perturbation. For example, if we take uh, four samples uh, from an 8-bit ADC, which has a 19.5 millivolt base unit with 5 volt range, and uh, at each sample we add a small perturbation so that the input voltage is shifted by one fourth of 19.5 uh, millivolt each time, so 4.9 millivolt, 9.8 millivolt. 14.6 millivolt and finally 19.5 millivolt and the input voltage to convert was 9 millivolt then we would get the following samples 0 0 1 1 shifting them by one bit to map into a nine bit makes them to be 0 0 2 2 then averaging those four values 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 2 over 4 gives 1 that mapped into a 9 bit corresponds to 9.8 millivolt, which is close to the actual input value that otherwise would have been lost if we sampled with just one 8 bit sample. Let's try to simulate this, bring down the samples to 16 and uh, 
increase this to 96 uh, samples and uh, you can see as you can see here we have uh, a lot of uh, duplicated samples but uh, if I add uh, some noise you can see the waveform is reconstructed uh, much better so in conclusions uh, oversampling and decimation increases the uh, resolution and uh, increases the signal to noise ratio because unlike uncorrelated uh, signals uh, the sum of uncorrelated signals uh, such as noise is uh, the square root of uh, such uh, a sum uh, so this increases uh, the signal to noise ratio and uh, it uh, reduces the available bandwidth uh, because uh, typically we already use the maximum sampling rate so to increase samples we are forced to reduce the input bandwidth uh, and uh, finally uh, for each virtual bit gained in resolution the number of samples must be increased by four times uh, so the number of samples increase very rapidly with the number of gained bits so in practice as we seen, for each virtual bit gained uh, n, the number of samples increases by 2 raised to 2 times n. So for one more bit we have 4 more samples, for 2 more bits uh, we have 16 more samples, for 3 bits uh, we have 64 more samples. It soon hampers the input bandwidth, uh, but for very low frequency signals uh, we can greatly increase the resolution and this is a code example so you can have an idea of how it can be done in C and this is a practical demonstration it's a circuit that is somewhat similar to an Arduino Nano and uh, here we have uh, uh, four analog uh, inputs uh, with a range of 5 volts uh, that are collected and converted uh, the converted data is sent uh, to a uh, display actually the software I wrote uh, is capable of uh, reading up to eight analog inputs uh, uh, but for the sake of this demonstration I used just four and uh, I connected four potentiometers uh, to adjust the voltage uh, but because of the crude build uh, sorry I didn't have the time to make it to scale and paint it it picks up a uh, hum noise from the mains uh, that makes the digit to wiggle a bit uh, I mentioned that uh, to squeeze more bits uh, we have to add uh, some noise but such a noise uh, should be out of band in respect to the input bandwidth uh, otherwise that noise would pop up uh, in the converted data and uh, thanks to oversampling and decimation here the native maximum resolution of the ADC included into the 80 mega 32 microcontroller is increased from 10 bits uh, to 12 bits well we have reached the conclusion of this presentation on uh, my website uh, at accidentalscience.com you will find uh, the simulator and uh, other complementary material and uh, I hope you found interesting this video if so consider to like and subscribe it costs nothing to you but it helps uh, the channel to grow for now that's all folks thanks for watching see you next time bye it is similar to beating like in this audio example where a fixed sine wave of 440 hertz is summed with a sweeping sine wave from 110 hertz to 880 hertz do you hear the frequency beating together let's hear it again that is caused by constructive and destructive sum of the two sine waves so this is not aliasing though because aliases are the result of missed sample cycles however the effect is pretty similar and this is what I was able to put together to give you an auditorial idea of the phenomena